Do it yourself on another level. Man installs gel blaster gun on his robotic dog. Shoots himself out demonstrating its power and range. Okay, it's not going to play now. Alright, it's late, but I'm going to test this uh, relay setup that I got now. I've got a non-latching relay. So the thing doesn't stay open like it was doing before. So you can see when I push this button, the light on that relay will go red and the gun will fire. Because oh. everybody's like, this is fake. See, you can see the shit right there. tree out there but it's definitely hitting that tree out there here i'll head out and let it shoot at me this is probably fucking dumb but why not cover my fucking eyes Call hello you me how about shimmy out shot by shimmer kakadash double on the city apostles and others of great millstone who rule well over the flock of israel shalom and salutation you brothers out here for some words of truth and sincerity shalom and salutation to you uh, Akim Akwaf paying attention, listening. The 12 tribes of Israel coming back for another lesson. And uh, you just watched uh, Do It Yourself on another level. Man installs gel blaster gun on his robot robotic dog. Instantly, I'm thinking of this scripture here. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. For what end is it for you? Day of the Lord is prophesied of, of a day in which judgment will come upon earth. Where the Lord says, you're, he puts his righteous on the right hand side and he puts his the wicked, separates mankind by righteous and wicked. Righteous oh, go on one side where the south leads to salvation, the wicked go on the other side where uh, it leads to destruction. And whether you, you know, we don't teach that the Yahweh Shah is going to come down and make a big line. Everybody form a line. You over here, you over there. It's the, it's the judgment that is passed, which is. Uh, you know, ultimately will separate who the righteous and the wicked was. It's their judgment passed on them. And well, that's what the day of the Lord is. So scriptures confront those who desire that day as if that's a day in which you really think you're ready for. To what end, end is it for you? And people don't ask themselves that question. You see, you can have a conversation with somebody um, who's in the world, you know, who not under, who don't understand uh, and have the type of conversation that we used to have in holy conversation and whatnot. Because, you know, your conversation advances when you're in this truth. One thing that doesn't get spoken about as often is your intelligence advances, your concentration advances, you know, your understanding advances, wisdom, knowledge, Lord willing, you're advancing. That's not just something we like to say, talk about. As if it's nothing, it's a big thing, it's a major thing that the Most High gives you an increase of learning and understanding. And so your consciousness, all these things is um, awakened now. And you're supposed to be able to operate and function in that because it is a better and a brighter consciousness than you had before. And so it says, to what end is it for you? The regular conversation which we have is, what is our ending? You know, what is what is um, it's going to look like during World War Three? What kind of uh, advantages will, are we? The Lord is the Lord going to bestow upon us some blessings in that day? That's going to give us all the advantage in our enemies or in the Lord's adversaries all the disadvantage. Like, how is that going to look? We operate on that level. That's a holy conversation, a holy thought. The scriptures say, meditate day and night. And so what meditating the terror and the, you know, the devastation, the atrocities to come because we're aligned with the scriptures. That's why it says to what ends, end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. There happens to be a large group of people who have heard of the day of the Lord who don't understand yet that it is not a day of light and pleasantries and gifts giving. And it's not your Christmas. It's no, nothing like your Halloween it's more like watching every destruction movie you've ever seen in your life in one.
the day of, and it's a slow, right, lead up to a third world's war. It's like, we're already in that phase and brothers know it, but it's the beginning phases. Like, here is, this is what Jacob's trouble looks like before Jacob's trouble. And that's where we're at in time. It says, verse 19, if a man, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear metal. So now he's giving them an explanation in which these people can understand, hopefully. Right. You understand like you running from a bit, a lion because in that time in the uh, where is this uh, Amos? I forget where exactly Amos was writing from. I might just look that up real quick just to have that. Amos, because he was in a certain captivity uh, speaking to uh, a certain group of men. Here it goes. So why we look up things, man? The book of Amos is the third of the 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament and the second in the Greek Septuagint tradition. Amos, an older contemporary of Hosea and Isaiah, was active at circa 750 BC during the reign of Jeroboam of Samaria, making Amos the first prophetic book of the Bible to be written. Amos, 750 BC, under the reign of Jeroboam of Samaria. Okay. Right, right before, if I'm not mistaken, Assyrian captivity, 750 BC. Then you could just look up 750 BC biblical linear, uh, and 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 find what you find there as far as what what was going on and who was ruling during that time. So it says, as if a man did flee from a lion. So they commonly understood in 750 BC era. There's no guns. There's no uh, there's no pepper spray. You know, you got bow and arrow and certain things like that. You got knives, knives and, you know, machetes and armor. But, you know, I'm sure fleeing from a lion was a common thing about around that land. You know, Samaria even. It says, and a bear met him uh, and went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. So the image he's relaying now is that, you know, when you come in, when the day of the Lord begins, it's going to set off as if you just flee from a line. Well, that's a, uh, a hectic of a situation as it is, right? You imagine yourself fleeing from a lion. You know, you just barely made it. That's a horror story in itself. That would be a story you would tell for the rest of your life. But then it says, and a bear met him. So you just got away from the lion and now you introduced to the next enemy, like as if this is some type of video game, you know, back to back enemies. And then it's a bear now. You flee the lion and ran into a bit. It says, or oh, went into the house. Now you flee the house. Now you flee, all right? You know, or you flee into the house and lean his hand on the wall and the serpent bit him. So now you're that person who, like, okay, by that time, by the time, by the time the serpent bit you after you fled from a bear and a lion and made it, you're starting to think that, like, maybe it's your destiny to die. Well, once that serpent bites you, you understand, like, I, I'm just meant to die by way of an animal, right? That's what that person would. Well, most people don't consider the day of the Lord to be like that. That's their misconception. And so bringing out, you know, having the prophets of the Lord bring out the destruction, and the devastation and, and, and the trials to come and the persecution and the fire to come and the droughts and the famines and the plagues to come and the different pestilences for us to point those out. That's the case scenario in which you're going to flee from a bear, flee from a lion, flee from uh, a serpent, but get, but get struck by the serpent. And likewise, you're going to flee from the family. You might flee from the interrogation of people. You might flee from uh, uh, um, war zone. When you, you know, if your city becomes a war zone, well, you won't flee from the chip. That would be that serpent that bites you. You see the serpent coming in the form of, right? That last strike that hits you. Well, the one of the very last things to be uh, mentioned in the scriptures and uh, to have happened to the masses of people is a, and prophecies to be completed is is a chip coming around. I mean, it's no you know it's no coincidence that now you know those fangs of the serpent resemble the fangs you know the needles uh, that's going to be uh, shoved into your from your right hands you know between your thumb and your index finger. And those needles that's going to be shoved inside they, you know, skulls are when they operate it on to get it inside their foreheads. Um, and these are all technology of the mark, you know, of the beast, beast NATO technology. Uh, the beast being EU and NATO in America. 
So when these things come to pass, man, you know, that's that serpent. They might escape this, that, and the third, but it's that last thing, whatever it be, that last plague that ends up snagging you and biting you because it's going to be a plague. It says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. Now, the reason why I played this guy here shooting, shooting stuff up with his um his new his do it yourself robotic dog that has a gun on top of it. And so this man, which is a maniac in any other world, part of the world, he'd be considered a maniac, is teaching people, regular people, average people, how to have a gun mounted to your do-it-yourself robot. So the times we live in is so strange that any day somebody could drop a robot at your door or at your neighbor's, your neighbor could get in our conversation or argument or rival gangs now who, who seeking new ways and methods to kill their ops could send out some of these dogs, man. Which, which you're capable of buying a dog right now, if you want to, and mounting something to it, right? They already doing school shootings. They already have the mentality of a, you know, I got to take everybody out with me. And so what you think is going to happen? Um, this is um, Matthew 24. I'm going to read 11 and 12. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And right after that, it says, and because iniquity shall abound, love of many shall wax cold. So wax, when you're dealing with the word wax, it's just like the word. Um, man, they ain't going to just let me have nothing easy. It's just like the word um, waxing. Uh, when you're dealing with a. Uh, when you're dealing with a moon cycle. Some call it waxing and a waning. I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Right, let's let's get some other definitions of wax real quick. Make sure I'm right. Wax of bees, something wax, a wax is singing from the sun. Recording wax and rob apply to record wax to increase in size. Here we go. Increase in size, number, strength, prosperity, intensity, to grow in value, moderation, to grow toward full development, to increase in phase or intensity. Use chiefly of the moon, of the satellites, or in inferior planets to increase. When it starts to wax, a waxing moon is a moon that increases going to a full moon. It's from dark to light. Right after the new moon, it becomes waxing, waxing until you get to a, a half moon. And then it's waxing until you get to a full moon. Then it's waning back to a half moon. And then it wanes back to a new moon. And that's a cycle, right? But it increase in size, number, and strength, intensity. So the love of many is going to uh, wax cold. The the coldness, right? When you get a cold shoulder, when you get a cold look, when you get a cold stare, and it's going to increase after that. Then what's what's next will be uh, fighting, you know, fighting words and, and the anger, right? And then what's next will be still in a harming, physically harming the other person. And after that, it will be just all out purge, mania, right? He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Uh, unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we're looking forward to being those, the lot of the ones who have endured unto the end. Because that's when all, you know, right before all hell breaks loose, the Lord is going to send his angels back to deliver his elect, which we bless. We, we, we pray and ask that we are part of so the Lord can restore us and have us abound in the kingdom of heaven. Instead of rotting here where this is our pollution here in America and these lands today. Lord, this video is edifying. Till next time, Shalom.